Guys, welcome back to another episode of Edge Master Gaming, and today, as you can tell from the title, we're revisiting my old Road to 40 challenge. If you don't know what the challenge was, it was simply to get to round 40 with only wall guns in a public game. This time, however, I'm going to do this one on the research facility map solo. And believe it or not, folks, this is my very first solo challenge in Project Lazarus. During the gameplay, I'm going to discuss my strategy on perks, weapons, map locations, and more. But of course, before we begin, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below if you like the Project Lazarus content on this channel. Make sure to also check out the description for timestamps of this video, other awesome links for Edge Master Gaming, including my Discord and Twitch stream. Alright guys, let's get started. It was round one in the research facility and I don't know what it is, but there's something about breaking windows in the spawn area that just makes it so satisfying, don't you think? It's now round two for two swipes, that is if you didn't know. That's right, all zombies die on round two with two swipes of the knife. And it's a really good thing that we're not on round 30 yet. On round three, it was time to start grinding. I picked up the Cardi B because if you didn't know, this gun is one of, if not the best grinding gun on the new map. Its location in this area of the map makes it so convenient to restock ammo and kill zombies. Because it's still early game, you'll want to use up your ammo as much as you can before grabbing the max ammo. Just like you see here. That way, you'll have ammunition when the next round begins. In round 4, our objective at this point is to gain enough points here to get us beyond all barriers that are preventing us from reaching the lab. Also, we want to get enough to pick up our next wall weapon that's going to assist us in reaching our endeavor. Moving on to round 6, we can now head to the lab to turn on the generator. On the way there, I grab the K1A. This gun is very essential in this strategy. If you haven't done so, please watch my map update 1.1 video where I cover this gun in its entirety. The link will be in the description box below. From here, I begin the process of grabbing all of the essential perks. It's now round 8 and we're still gathering perks. Now, I know what you're thinking. Edge, why in the world would you buy Quick Revive when you're playing solo? Shouldn't you be picking up Mule Kick? And that's a great question. And I'll tell you, for those that don't know, the Quick Revive perk not only helps you to revive a downed teammate quickly, it now also helps you reduce your health recovery time by 50%. So what does this mean exactly? Well. When your screen turns red from getting hit by a zombie, it takes half the time to get back to normal. Next, let's talk about why Mule Kick isn't good for this challenge. And the answer is, there are only two wall guns that are even worth your time beyond round 35, which I'll cover later in more detail. Here, you'll notice that I'm delaying grabbing the nuke and insta-kill. The reason is that we want to get as many points as we can. For more information on how to utilize power-ups more effectively, please see my advanced strategy guide. Link is in the description box below. It's round 10 and part of the beauty of doing this challenge of course is just being able to simply grab ammo when needed. Here I got into a tight situation and grabbed more ammunition for the K1A. Now all I have to do is buy more ammo for the Cardi B, but let me go ahead and just waste all the rest of this ammo first. Oh, come on. Well, it could have been worse. At least the K1A wasn't packed. It's round 11 and time to really grind. At this point, we want to accumulate as many points that we can to pack a punch, buy more guns, and grab more ammo in future rounds comfortably. My target point total is somewhere north of 50,000 points, and I hope to reach it by round 20. In round 14, I became a 682 level Deathmaster. Fast forwarding a bit to round 19, I'm going to pack both of my guns as we hit our point goal. There's really no point in delaying it beyond this point since we are playing solo. In round 20, we want to get as much out of the Cardi B as possible. 
Remember to reload after 2-3 to three kills to continue to get maximum damage. This gun, while great at grinding, really starts to fall off in damage in round 25. By that time I'll be replacing it with the next wall gun to be added to my arsenal. It's round 24 and time to buy our next wall gun. The Remington is perfect for this challenge because it's extremely powerful and precise. This gun one shots up to and including round 33. All we have to do is go and pack a punch and we'll be ready for the next round. At round 25 the Remington is so good. I know I mentioned precision but watch this. You can perform single headshots or if you wait a bit and do your best to line up your targets, you can perform multiple headshots and conserve on ammunition. See what I mean? It's round 28 and it was here that I actually began using the K1A as the primary gun of choice. The reason is that the zombies are much more faster than you can kill with the Remington, but it's still a great secondary. On round 31 it was time to begin implementing the most important part of this strategy. I'm going to use the metal detector area as a safe room against the zombies. This does a number of things. If I ever get the feeling that I'm going to get overrun, I can run back in the room and shut the door. Watch. Not only does this protect you from any zombies getting in, it also helps despawn any of the zombies that are on the other side of the door because the game knows that the door is no longer accessible to get to you. So, we're going to open this door again to kill a few more zombies. This helps chip away at the horde until we get to the end of the round. So we're going to have to go get more ammo for the K1A soon, which brings up the next critical point for this strategy. And oh my gosh, his arm just got crushed in the door, did you see that? That looks so painful, jeez. Anyway, you can safely go to the teleporter in the main room whenever you need to get more ammo. And whatever you do, do not go around this teleport module to take the decontamination tunnel because you will get cornered waiting for the door to open. At the end of round 32, it was time to retire the Remington. So of course I replaced it with the Ranger. The packed Ranger and K1A are by far the best dynamic duo when it comes to wall guns in Project Lazarus. At about round 34, 35-ish, I'm gonna make the Lone Survivor the primary. It was round 35 and another thing that's great about this strategy is when killing zombies this close to the safe room, the power-ups usually end up inside the room or just outside the door. As I mentioned before, if you get overrun, you can just close the door to despawn a few zombies. Right after the door reopens, the item can be picked up without issue, just like you see here. On round 36, something occurred that tends to happen with this strategy that you will need to be prepared for. Sometimes when you open the door, there will be a few more zombies than the lone survivor can kill. If this happens, don't try to reload your weapon. Just back up, hit the door panel at the opposite side of the room to close the door again, and switch guns to the K1A to finish them off. You don't want to be caught reloading your gun when zombies are chasing you. It's round 38 and for this strategy if you ever have to replenish your ammo during the middle of the round, when you return to the safe room it's best to go back the way you came. Meaning, you enter back through the main room like this. But you have to be careful because going through the teleporter can be pretty dangerous, as you just witnessed since the zombies don't despawn as quickly. Aside from that, I'll show you the importance of why going back the way you came is the best thing to do later.
We're on round 39 guys and one thing that I forgot to mention is when closing the door to this side of the safe room, on higher waves the zombies are fast enough that one may come through the rear. Always make sure that you check behind you when reopening the door. Remember guys when I mentioned to always go back the way you came? Well you're about to witness the reason why. As you see at higher waves, the zombies spawn in the room so fast. Now you're also about to witness the reason why the K1A is one of the top wall weapons and chosen for this challenge. Oh man. And after successfully averting a heart attack, we made it. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video today. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. Also, if you didn't realize it yet, I actually did this challenge right before the latest launcher update. That's why you didn't see me getting badge rewards and so forth. Please be on the lookout for my next videos where I'll be covering helpful tips for the research map as well as the new gun. Of course, let me know in the comments section your thoughts about my solo strategy. And as always guys, remember to have fun, take care, and God bless.